Bear in mind there are no parts available from Kawasaki for this unit. This disassembly is for inspection purposes only. Begin by removing the gear case cover, but leave the two upper bolts that retain the plate. These special tools are needed. Two 8 by 1.25 hex bolt. Thread the two 8 mm bolts into the special threaded jacking holes at the upper and lower corners of the cover. Alternately apply pressure to each jacking bolt to break the sealer on the cover. It may also be necessary to apply leverage at the two pry points that are built in for this purpose. Remove the gear case cover and set it aside. This exposes the supercharger's rotor gears. Do not for any reason disassemble these gears. Flip the unit around and remove the pulley's damper assembly. If any shims come out with the damper, set them aside for now. They will be important later. Now remove the pulley. And having access, you can now remove the pulley mount. After the pulley's mount bolts are out, rotate the mount slightly to expose surfaces on which to carefully pry the mount off using tire irons. Now more shims will be exposed on the rotor shaft. Each supercharger has a different number and selection of differently sized shims. Now remove the steel end cap, which will expose the other rotor's fixing nut. It's time for another special tool. This time a penny or similar piece of very soft metal. Insert the penny between the rotor gears and turn the gears slightly to hold the penny in place. Now it is possible to remove the rotor fixing nuts. You may want to relocate the penny before removing the second nut. Remove the nuts and set them aside. Now remove the two bolts holding the bearing plate in place. And once again, use the 8mm jacking bolts to apply enough pressure to break the sealer on the bearing plate. Tighten the bolts alternately and tap on the exposed rotor shafts on the other side of the supercharger gently with a soft hammer. Once the bearing plate is broken free, the rotors and gears can be removed from the supercharger as an assembly. Inspect the inside of the supercharger case for service needs such as evidence of corrosion or physical damage. Also look closely at the mounted bearings for wear. Inspect the rotors themselves for deterioration of their special coating or corrosion or other wear, especially where the rotors meet the bearing plate. After cleaning the parts, apply sealer to the supercharger housing. The supercharger case has a perfectly straight edge only on one side. And there is a corresponding straight edge on the bearing plate on the rotor assembly. This will help you orient the parts correctly as you reassemble the supercharger. Install only the two bearing plate bolts at this time. Snug these bolts but don't torque them. Install the rotor fixing nuts. Use the penny as before to lock the gears temporarily. And torque the two rotor fixing nuts to 35 foot-pounds. Apply sealer to the pulley mount and install it. Snug the bolts in a crisscross pattern, then torque the bolts to 90 inch pounds. Repeat on the other cover. 
sealer, bolts, and torque. Now it's time for those shims. Make sure you have all of them. Apply a thin coat of waterproof grease to the pulley mount and also to the rotor shaft splines. Install the pulley, making sure the snap ring is fully seated. Then install the pulley damper. Install the damper socket head bolts first and snug them. Then install and torque the center bolt. And afterward, torque the socket head bolts. Apply sealer to the gear case cover. Install the cover and its bolts. Then torque all the bolts, including the two bearing plate bolts. Don't forget to replenish the gear case lubricant. It is recommended you use the correct Kawasaki lubricant. Use the whole bottle. Afterward, remember to tighten the fill plug. 